Hi gang, Rob here. Time for another vlog at the 2022 June Bark River Grind In. We are talking with Mr. Mike Stewart. The real Mike Stewart, not Brian Hill. Right, not Brian Hill. Not Brian Hill. So it's Friday afternoon. Mike, I don't know if you've noticed, but it looks like there are about as many knives being made today as there usually are on a Saturday. What's up with that? Well, we decided to start on Thursday um, because we have so many people. And I guarantee you tomorrow will be much more crowded than it is today. So Saturday will be even more. Um, I think it was a good idea to extend it an extra day um, to give some people a, uh, a little leg up. And also we get such a traffic jam in the grinding room on Saturday, this should help a little bit. It's still gonna be in the traffic jam in there, but it's, it, this should definitely help a little bit. And I'm glad we did this by adding the extra day to the grind in. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So I'm, how, I'm how many people do we have signed up? Uh, we had 104, <laughs> and but we only had about 70 confirmed. That doesn't mean anything. So that means what, about 150 real? <laughs> Realistically, it could be that number. <laughs> But we're prepared. Uh, we're prepared. So, some people go out, you know, on social media and say, ah, you don't even need to tell them you're coming. Just show up. I don't know who would ever do that, but. Well, they, they know that we're not going to turn anybody <laughs> exactly. away. They know that. You know what I can say? You didn't sign up by such but, and such. But you're say, ready okay, for come them. On come That's on it. in. Yeah, come on in. So it could be like the biggest grind in ever, maybe. I, I It has the potential to be. It has the potential to be. Typically, though, September is bigger than June. Right. So if this is any indicator, I probably need two tents in the back instead of one. Probably. If people would actually use the tent. That was funny, wasn't it? It was funny. Everybody's crammed in the sheath shop eating lunch. Right. It's like, I paid $1,200 to have that tent set up, <laughs> and everybody's eating in, 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 in the inside the building. I'm like, there is a tent out there. Bring your food out there. Uh -huh. So 11 people went out in the tent. I was out there. You were out there. I was out there too. So, is this is the grind in size an indicator of Bark River's business? Is is the business grown as much as the participation in the grind in? I don't think there's ever been a demand this big on our products, and it's That's, growing all the time. That is awesome. Our Facebook group is under is up to just under forty thousand people. That's insane. Uh, and at at present. We're 35,000 knives back ordered. And we only have five distributors. In fact, I had two other distributors call this week and want to add us. And I had to apologize and say, I'm sorry, we'd love to put you on as a distributor. We just don't have production enough to add you to the, to, uh, to the mix. Or I said, do me a favor, call me again in a year and we'll, we'll take another look. It's a tough problem to have. Good problem to have. Yes and no. It, it's a good. <clears throat> if, you, if you're looking about a job security, security, yes, it's a good problem to have. But if you step into the customer's shoes or the dealer's shoes, it's not so good because they're waiting for all these knives, and they're selling almost at a faster rate than we can make them. Mm. You know, and, and that goes for our distributor in Germany. You know, she's. Her orders used to be maybe three, four thousand dollars a week. They're twenty thousand dollars a week, <gasps> and and she just handles Western Europe. So, you know, and then you get uh, DLT, KSF, and Blue Ridge. They will literally take anything we can make for them, right? Every day, and it is funny because this time of year we get a lot of people in here who think we have a showroom. Yeah, and they want to buy a knife, and they look around and they go, well, "Where's your showroom?" I'm sorry, we don't have a showroom and we don't have any knives. <laughs> they, they don't understand that every knife we make every day goes right out the door. It's already promised to somebody right. else. The only knives here are like my archive collection that's not for sale. Right. They go right out the door. Yeah, so. You know, and um, we ship KSF almost every day, Blue Ridge. We literally drive the knives down to DLT. It's like an hour and 10 minutes. Right. <clears throat> John has gone down there every day this week. In fact, he just came in here and hit me up for a hundred bucks for gas. <laughs> so, so business is good. Yes. Family life is pretty good. You got two new grandbabies. Act, yes, two, <clears throat> two brand new ones. Um, so for those of you who are keeping count, Mike, how many is it now? 15. 
Oh, I thought it was like 67. If you count all these kids, yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody under the age of 18 who walks in here is Mike's grandchild. They, well, they all call me Grandpa Mike. For nothing. And, and they also know that if I get the chance, I'll spoil the hell out of them. Absolutely. So, so Jackie has a new baby and Jim has a new baby. Yes. And Gwen's only, what, three weeks old? Three weeks old. Jackie's daughter? Yeah, yeah she's three weeks old. And then uh, um, Evelyn is one today. Wow. Awesome. This is really, birthday. today. Happy birthday, birthday, Evelyn. Right. And Angelia is like uh, 18 months. Wow. So we have all these grandchildren, right? And you, and all of a sudden we had a gap. And now we have three more little ones. Uh -huh. I love that, by the way. I know you do. So, Grandpa, you got grandkids to keep up with. How's the health of the nearly 74-year-old Mike Stewart? Um, I'm pretty happy with my health. So tell uh, people what happened to you not so long ago. What, the heart attack? Yeah, the Mike Stewart never gets sick. Well, little, I don't. I don't get sick. had a little cardiac event. I had a pain in my chest that I never had before. And it was on the right side not the left uh -huh. but i knew it had to be a heart attack because i never had that pain before <clears throat> so and i and i put, I put a little blog up about what all, everything that happened because it turned out to be a pretty funny day um and I, I know it doesn't sound like a heart attack could be a funny day but it was it's funny if you're living to tell about it i came to work anyway got everybody started got in my in my jeep and drove over to the hospital I walked in, and this was, you know, they still have all the COVID rules. So, of course, the ER was empty, except for the nice lady sitting there at the desk. And I walked up, and I, I told her my name, and I said, you have all of my information, um, you know, all my medical stuff in there, and uh, I'm having a heart attack. And she says, can you stand over there? <laughs> can you stand over there? So I went to the other side of the counter, <clears throat> stood in front of the other window, she got up from her chair, went to the other chair, and said, can I help you? It did not get any better from there. Wow. They brought out a pink wheelchair that I think was designed for three people. Uh -huh. And I sat in the middle of it, and it almost collapsed. Ah. And they wheeled me in this room and you know, with COVID, they have everything divided off. So they have all these zipper walls. So I'm sitting there on the gurney and 10,000 zippers all opened up at once. And all these women came rushing in and pulled all my clothes off. It wasn't as erotic as it sounds. <laughs> <clears throat> so then one of them had a difficult time finding this vein. The one that's popping out? Yes. Yeah. This blue one that you all can see right now. Right, right. So my whole hand was black and blue here. And then they put another one up in here. And then they gave me morphine, which you're not supposed to do for right side events. They gave it to me anyway. My reaction to morphine is probably not typical. Everything is funny. It oh just my. made things worse. So... You know, they're, doing, they're running all these tests. And this one woman who apparently was a doctor, or maybe a PA, but I think a doctor, she came in and she said, you're having a heart attack. I couldn't help myself. It was like, that's why I came here. So the, um, she said, well, how did you get here? I said, I drove myself. She went berserk. You, you're supposed to have an ambulance bring you. Right. So I, I'm sorry, I didn't know the rules. So I drove myself here. So then they, in my records, it says who to call. So they called Jackie and they called Leslie. So then she walks in on about 10 or 15 minutes later and she says, um, we really can't help you because we no longer have a cardiac unit here. All the doctors quit. Hmm. And again, I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, who would, who, what reasonable person would expect a hospital to have cardiac? I think, I think that's pretty crazy to expect them to have doctors. Yeah, kind of. Okay, but they, all the doctors in the hospital quit. They normally have one or two on staff for the whole hospital. Um, so she says, we're going to fly you 
to the big hospital in Marquette. Hey, that's a good idea. They probably have a helicopter for that. Well, that became a problem. What? Um, she told me that they were going to fly me there. Uh -huh. And then, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, she, she wanders back in. That, by the way, there's zippers going up and down this whole time. And um, Was that getting annoying or was that funny too? It was funny. I'm okay. sorry. Everything was funny. <laughs> so she says, we can't find the helicopter. So my response, sorry about this. Did you look in your pocket? Did, the, did she think that was funny? I thought it was funny. I didn't care if she thought it was funny or not. So Was she a big girl? Or? No. Oh, uh -huh. so, so it's not feasible the helicopter would have actually fit in her pocket. I don't think so, because right. I think they're fairly large. So Plus, she says, well, we're going to drive you to Marquette. Okay. And I said, I should have driven there myself. That even made her madder. I can't imagine <laughs> why. <clears throat> so 15, 20 minutes later, Dwayne came in. Dwayne. Dwayne was the ambulance driver. I actually knew who he was. Dan Tope used to be oh, a right, paramedic. Oh, you're right, 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 right. So we knew some of those guys. Yeah, Dan Tope used to be a paramedic on, the, on that scene. And so was Kat. Kat was a paramedic too, his wife. So we knew some of these people. So they picked me up and put me on his gurney and they take me out there. Very nice young girl was going with us. I wish I remember her name, but she was very, very nice and very accommodating, very professional. So we get about, I don't know, five miles. And he says, hey, Mike, can we put on the lights and sirens? And I know it. Let's have a party. Come on, put them on. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. So, so Dwayne flips on the lights and sirens, and off we go to Marquette. We get about halfway up, and this young girl calls the hospital on her cell phone. And she says, does Mike have COVID? Because, you know, they give you a COVID test. Right. And they start saying something like, well, because of HIPAA, this... She said, I'm in an ambulance with him. Does he have COVID or not? So they said, no. She said, thanks. And she hung up on him. Wow. It was, it was just, it, 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 and again, I got morphine in me. Everything's funny. We, oh, we have a video bomber. Yeah. Miss Leslie. Miss Leslie, how are you? The real boss. Just fine. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Yes. So, um. Dwayne actually knew what he was doing. He didn't wheel me into the ER. He, 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 he rolled right into the operating area of the hospital. They pulled me out of there. Then they put me in um, an operating room. Again, all full of people staring at me. They were probably wondering why I had a heart attack and I was grinning, but I couldn't help it. And it kind of surprised me because, you know, operating rooms usually have that big light above right. the bed. They didn't have that. They had a thing hanging that looked like one of these light fixtures. And it was hanging like right here. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know that that was the fluoroscope thing so he could see inside of me. I didn't know what that was. Right, why would you? <clears throat> right, I mean, uh, so. In, and of course there's a lady shaving my, gr <clears throat> my crotch at the same time. Because a lot of times they go in that way. That's, they, they take a vein and they go in that way. Um, in walks a Filipino midget. You can't, you, can't, you can't make this up. A Filipino midget? Yes. Next thing you're going to tell me that that's the surgeon. That's the surgeon. That's the surgeon, okay. So, <clears throat> he tells the woman to stop saving my crotch, which confused me. So I picked up my head, and my head hit the thing hanging there. So he starts yelling at me, don't hit light, don't hit light. That's the Filipino midget. Yep, the Filipino midget. I didn't know it was the x-ray thing. So he takes my, my hand and he slams it down and he has like bungee cords and duct tape and he's like, and then it dawns on me, he's gonna go in my arm. Before I could say anything, I don't know how he missed it. I have a titanium wrist. Needle no go where she's supposed to go. Ouch. No, I didn't feel a thing. No? No, no. Oh, that's right. We have morphine. Yeah. So he, he eventually <clears throat> figured out how to go around that because he moved the thing over where he could see it. And he goes, oh. So he goes around that. 
Now here's what I, here's the good part. The minute he put that stint in, I had zero pain, zero. I mean, I went from having this like fairly good pain, maybe like a four right. on the pain scale, which is for me a lot. <clears throat> That'd be an 11 for most people. It, it, it would be up there, it'd be an eight or nine, because I have a very high pain tolerance. The minute that guy put that in there, nothing, no pain at all. It was, I went like, holy cow, look at this. So they, so he left, um, they picked me up, put me on another stretcher, and they wheeled me into the ICU. So this lady comes in. I found out later she was a PA. She was, she was the cardiac PA. And they had me in the ICU. And she's looking at me. She's looking at the chart. She's looking at my weight. She's looking at my blood pressure. And she said, you know, for a person your age, you're in such good health, you don't even need to be in ICU. So she said, I'm going to leave you in ICU for the next few hours. And I'm going to come back and check you again. And by the way, they let, even though with COVID, they let my wife in, which was really nice. That was nice of them. Yeah, they let Leslie in. It was really nice. And because uh, Leslie was more upset than I was. So um, they then they, um, she came back, checked everything out. They put me in a regular room uh, on, the, on the cardiac floor. And then... Um, I said I was hungry, so in the typical Uber uh, flare, let's call that flourish, they brought me a bologna sandwich with no condiments. So you thought you were in jail? I did. I thought. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if there was a jail annex. I didn't know. <clears throat> so that immediately gave me heartburn. Of course. But I was really hungry, so I ate it. So, um, so I said. Um, I have a little bit of heartburn. Um, and they said, oh, okay. So they brought me one Tums. I still had the heartburn. One Tums. Yeah. So then they brought me one, like a Xanax or something. <coughs> Not Xanax, but the one that starts with the F. Fl Floridine or something. Uh, oh, Whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. And it, that takes time to work. So I realized I could order stuff. May I have a glass of milk? They brought it. They brought it. Drank the milk. Heart Heart went gone. away. Shocking. I don't understand it. You know, but <clears throat> they, I drank the milk and that went away. So um, she comes back in and she said, we're obligated to keep you for the night. This is Saturday. She said, you, she said technically we could discharge you right now, but I'm going to keep you for the night. So she says, where's your pants? Now, this is a difficult question. I've not seen my well, pants. That's a question you've had a hard time answering at several in the past, points in your several life. Several other times. Right? Last time I saw my pants, they were in Escanaba. We're in Marquette. So I said, I'm not sure where my pants are, and is this a quiz? <laughs> so, so Leslie found my pants. They were in the closet. They, they brought the pants up. In Marquette. In Marquette. My pants made it to Marquette. They yeah. may have brought it up with the helicopter. I'm not sure. So, I did see the helicopter. So it's possible later. that your pants were in the lady's pocket with the helicopter. It's quite possible. Hmm. Okay. So they, uh, she says, put your pants on. She unhooked everything. And she says, I want you and your wife to walk all around the hospital <clears throat> for at least an hour. <clears throat> so I did. Come back in the room. And she, said, and she comes back in. She doesn't hook me back off to anything. No oxygen, no IV, nothing. And she says, unfortunately, we have to keep you tonight for observation. You'll be leaving whenever you feel awake tomorrow morning. So we were home like by noon. You know, that's like an hour drive. And um, she, she says, um, and your wife can drive you home. That lasted about four steps out of the door. Who drove, who drove home? I did. Of course you did. Why not? Why not? I felt fine. So, and, and Leslie gave me the stink eye, which, you know, that's normal. The, the wife's stink eye is normal. Mm. Yeah, so, but I'm used to it. So it like rolls off water off a duck's back. So um, I drove home. So my crew is kind of like a big family. And they know that Grandpa Mike goes food shopping on Sunday. 
I get home, sit down for a few minutes, doorbell rings. It's my crew bringing in groceries. How about that? <laughs> they said, listen, you're an a-hole and we know you're gonna go shopping, so <clears throat> we're not gonna let you go shopping. And they brought all the groceries in. Thank you, crew at Bark River. Yeah, but I was back at work Monday. Well, good, so how's it going now? No problem. Um, I had, what do they call that thing where they light, they, they light their heart up with um, uh, echo, echo something? Echocardiogram? I guess. It looked, it looked like an ultrasound with no baby. <clears throat> okay. You know, that's what it looked like to me. And um, they did that uh, about a month later. And I went to the PT, of course. You have to do like 36 sessions of PT or 50 sessions of PT. So oh, I did that. I bet you were just a dream client for the PT people. It was, it was pretty funny. <clears throat> because, they, you know, they start you off on the treadmill. And I... I, and it was a, the, the gal who runs that. Her name is Lacey. She's a very nice gal. Uh, probably the most efficient employee they have in that entire hospital over there. So she turns on the thing, and you know she's got the chest thing hooked up and everything, so she can monitor me. And they turn it on, and I said, "Does this go any faster? I don't think I can walk this slow." <laughs> so she turns it up a little bit, and but by the end, I was running at four miles an hour with about a 10% incline. And she said, you know, you're not supposed to be able to do this. <clears throat> She's at your age, you're not supposed to be able to do this. I said, well, don't tell me that. As long as I don't know I can't do it, then I can do it. Exactly. So don't tell me. But um, I, I went through everything. I got a letter in the mail saying that my heart was at 55 plus discharge, which is normal. Right. And I never heard from them again. So that's an electrical measurement, right? Is that what that, what's the what's the percent discharge? Oh, they watch your heart. Now. I don't know. If, it's blood discharging blood. Okay, okay. It's blood, it's blood flow. Okay. Blood flow. So um, I never heard from them again. I had to take that Berlinta blood thinner for a year, and a baby aspirin, um, and a, something they called a beta blocker. They didn't even check on anything they knew I was getting the prescriptions at the end of the year they closed my case huh. which I found out from the pharmacist they didn't even tell you you're done no never heard another word interesting so the pharmacist <clears throat> and the good news is you've learned a valuable lesson yes you're not smoking anymore I'm, I'm smoking a whole lot less <laughs> oh and I have this thing Oh, a vapor thing. A vapor thing. A vapor thing. Yeah. This one's strawberry peach mint. Uh-huh. I also like the cherry cola one. Right. Leslie likes the uh, tobacco vanilla. But the Newport intake is definitely lessened, right? By, I would say, more than half. More that's, than half. That's good. Yeah. So I saved money on the Newports, but I spend it on these now. So I'm still net at the same amount of money per week. But um, these, these are interesting. And I, they last a day and a half, 2,000 yeah. puffs or something, they say. Well, you look remarkably healthy for all you've been through in the last couple I, of years. I feel, I feel just fine. <clears throat> I still have my little smoker's cough. That didn't go away. Yeah. You know, I guess that takes a few years, but I'd have to stop smoking for that. Um, but I have no real complaints. And... Um, and, and we're in a circumstance where we just can't make enough product. Right. So I'm always here, and um, I love talking to everybody on Facebook. We have a good time with that. I know you do. You know, the the jokes are still hot and heavy. Yes, they are. The ones that understand the jokes. I suppose, since we've been on here for almost 25 minutes, we should probably see if anybody's, you know, cut any fingers off or is spurting blood out in the shop or... It is, there is a grinding going on. There's a grinding going on. Um, not that many people as a, as a full-blown one, but we actually have a good turnout for, yeah. for now. Well, a thank, lot of knives are already finished. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us. I know a lot of people have kind of been wondering what's been up with you. and Are you still alive and kicking? And seems like better than ever almost. I think so. Yeah. I'm well, still awesome. holding in there at 155 pounds. Um, Leslie, Leslie's on keto, by the way. <clears throat> 
And you won't have to cut weight for your next MMA fight because you fight at 165, right? 163. Oh, 163, okay. Well, the, uh, let's not tell anybody. Leslie lost 25 pounds and she's really happy. Well, she just looks gorgeous as she always. She does. I know. She does. There's so, Todd Walensky lurking in the shadows. Yeah, Todd. Todd's oh. always here. We may come back and talk to him later. I think I think he should. That's it for this one, guys, or my phone's going to shut off. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Love you.